Hi, and welcome to another Tom Murray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today on the show, I'm talking to an artist who actually started out making greeting cards, but painting them by hand and found out when the demand came during Christmas time that maybe that wasn't the quickest way to do it. So instead of having them printed on demand, bought their own printer and started doing that in-house and then built from that into making other types of paintings, presenting at shows, craft fairs, things like that. So we talk about the progress of going from a hand-painted greeting card sort of format to making multiple, multiple designs of the same paintings. Also, the person has a background in animation, which I found intriguing, so we talk a little bit about that too. So here's my interview, starting right now. My name is Ashley Shaw Adams. And I am a professional watercolor artist. Now, I was looking at your stuff, and I know you've done craft fairs, and I see things. They, they are definitely watercolor style, but you have stickers, and you have paintings, and prints, and things like that. So I was curious, like, what's the specific background of what you do? So it's watercolor. Yes, it is watercolor. I've dabbled a bit in ink as well. Um but the specifics are I tend to stay in my nice little watercolor painting lane. Right. So. Well, yeah. And there are, um, I do see pen lines in some of the watercolors you do. And it's funny. I've seen watercolor over the years. And when that's added, sometimes it doesn't even occur to me until I think about it. It's like, oh, yeah, there's also pen in this. But yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It, it definitely helps bring an extra dimension to the art if I'm looking for that specifically. Yeah. Um, I, I paint a variety of subjects. I always tell people that, you know, I love to paint and I paint what I love. Mm -hmm. So I'll paint flowers because I love gardening and I love being outside and I love being in nature. And I also paint dragons because I'm a huge nerd and I play <laughs> a lot of dragons and dragons and I play video games mm -hmm. and so if I'm like painting a floral scene, for instance, maybe I want it to be softer, but then like maybe with some of my dragons, I'll make those outlines so that I can make the dragons pop and sometimes vice versa. If I want a softer dragon or if I want a specific flower to stand out, yeah, I'll use my, uh, my mixing techniques there. So Okay. And how did you get started with water, watercolor? Because it's not, I, or at least for me, it's not an easy medium. To me, it's just like, well, that just bled everywhere. You know, I, I don't, I, I can't control <laughs> it. I've, I love watercolor. I just can't do it. <laughs> I, well, and I always tell people, because people will come up to me at my various shows and conventions and things that I do, like, oh, watercolor is so hard. Oh, so uh, it's not just me. Okay, good. <laughs> it's not just you. It's, I mean, I, I, I've, I can't tell you how many at this point it's, it's probably like hundreds of people who have told me this huh. and I'm just like, you know, I really struggled with watercolor too for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I was finally like sat down in college and our instructor, you know, we went through all of the basics of like, you start with pencil, we go to pen, we do shading, whatever. And then when we got to color, we did watercolor and he taught us how to do watercolor that is how I learned to watercolor was being taught okay. one on one. But what I've learned more than anything is what the watercolor is a type of medium where if you just accept that it's going to do its own thing, that is when you will get the results that you're looking for. Mm. And it might not necessarily be the results that you start out with thinking like, this is what I want. Because you, there is an element of control there that you just have to let go of. Okay. Watercolor does not want to be controlled. And once you kind of accept that, then you'll start getting the results that you're kind of looking for. It sounds like you're talking about, it actually sounds like you're talking about uh, train my dragon. Like it doesn't want to be controlled. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a, There's a similar analogy there. For sure. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so you said that the teacher in uh, college, helped you know teach you this that was a great sentence tom uh it helped teach you this <laughs> what were you if you 
hadn't been doing that in college and you were like, I want to learn how to do this. What were you, so what were you actually going to college for? Was it just art in, uh, in particular or like, what were you going to college for? No. So I actually went to college for film and sound design. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> Which is why I have experience with podcasts. Yeah. Uh, when we started, you had said that you had a background in that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I studied all different types of film, both studying the film and how to make film. Okay. Um, and now in my day job, uh, I work in photo studios in the Madison area. There's a lot of very oh, large companies. Okay. Yeah. That, that operate in, in and around the Madison area and... I do a little bit of everything from like assisting to I do stop motion animation. Right now I'm on a really big stop motion animation project. Um, oh. And my uh, experience in film just like encompassed all different forms of the film and entertainment industry from like, like I said, from studying it to making it to being in it. Okay. Et cetera. Um, and I was also studying theater in school as well, but I sort of got like halfway through my college education and um, started running out of like the requirements that I needed and started having more room in my schedule to take the fun classes. Okay. And I had, I've, I've always been an artist ever since I was, you know, two. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you know, throughout the years discovered that I had a natural aptitude to, you know, draw and paint and things like that. Yeah. So after high school, I kind of dropped off of that and let it go. And then once I had more free space in my college time, started taking art courses and was like, huh, maybe I should have been doing this a lot earlier because it was <laughs> So nice to both hone my skills and also it, it was just very relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, so graduated from school with my degree in film, but also with some art classes under my belt. Yeah. And now you're doing both. <laughs> now I'm doing both. I, I kind of let art go a little bit more after I graduated. Again, just because real life happens right. and... I didn't make the time to do art for myself. Um, and then eventually was like, why am I not doing this? I enjoy it and it's relaxing and I'm a stressed out millennial. Yeah. <laughs> um, and decided that, you know, it might be fun to start selling a few things online. Yeah. Um, and well, it, went around, it's, it's, went around, uh, what time around was this that you were doing it? Why can't I say sentences today? Around what time were know. you doing it's this? Sunday, it's hard. <laughs> um, it was around, it was early 2016. Okay. Is when I decided I'm going to sell my art and then I put it off for a year. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you so, made the decision and that was like, it's almost like I really did it and that, that yeah. held you over for another year. Okay. That's um, valid. That's about yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then I started selling my art in earnest online in 2017. And I did my first craft show at the um, Baraboo Fair on the Square in fall of 2019. Okay. And then the pandemic hit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I'm running into that story a lot uh, in, during the podcast this season. <laughs> Everybody has, it, it's, it's a commonality that like, we all have that experience and we all have different experiences with it. Right. So it, it's really interesting to me too, just hearing like everybody's, uh, different things that they kind of went through at the beginning of it all, you know? So, yeah. Well, what were and, some of the things that you started making when you first started going, I'm going to sell things online? Like what were, what were the, like, were you just um, painting? It was it was all so it was it was watercolor okay um and i sold exclusively original works mm -hmm. which is just like wild because that is so time consuming and so hard yeah <laughs> but i was like i'm gonna do this all the time and then decided to sell hand-painted greeting cards 
Um, and I also did a lot like of, individually hand painted greeting cards. You're saying, yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it see was, a scaling problem with that at all. No, no, <laughs> no. it was uh, it was a choice that I made. Um, I also sold wine cork art and like recycled wine cork. Huh? Um, yeah, this was I, I had like a lot of corks from different craft projects. So I started making bulletin boards and like keychains and stuff. OK. Um, and I did what did away with that within a year because like they weren't selling and my watercolor was so I just don't do I don't mess with that anymore. All right. Uh, but that's also a part of you know figuring out the demand of your clientele. Well, and I mean what I'm I'm trying to picture what the the wine cork thing like what were, what type of stuff were you making? I can't picture what it would be. Like I would you know make like a keychain with uh just like a little dangly wine cork on it. Okay. From whatever I had drank that weekend or or i would take a picture frame um and that was like a fair like fairly deep and i would make these wine corks into like recycled cork boards that you could just hang on your wall and use okay like with thumbtacks and stuff um but that was also really labor intensive i was picturing like macaroni painting type or like macaroni art type thing where you're using the corks and like you know like making them into little drawings or something so that's you know, why i was I just sure like did, i sure did think about that <laughs> okay never followed through with it <laughs> okay but it was more it was more of a practical approach okay yeah um, no definitely that's what i'm hearing that's why that's why i'm like yeah. well that sounds a lot more reasonable than what i was thinking okay good <laughs> <laughs> um but those weren't selling and right. my watercolor art was uh and i was just like you know screw this i'm not gonna do this anymore so i didn't <laughs> at this point what type of watercolor were you doing because you mentioned that you had done nature and you had done supernatural so what what uh... yep. i started um with like i was really really interested in uh, the galaxy type stuff, which oh, okay. I have since done quite a lot of work with. Um, so I would do like just a very simple galaxy scene, with, like a moon or right. something like that. Um, but uh, when it really took off was when I started doing Christmas cards mm. because everybody, everybody receives Christmas cards. And those Christmas cards have to be bought from somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I started doing really simple like Christmas trees and ornaments and things that were just like more generic. Um, and that like the Christmas season of 2017 uh, is when I like really started getting orders okay and this is Um, you were still hand painting at this time and i was still hand painting every single card (laughs) that's kooky all right okay yeah it was like i said it was a choice that i made all right now (laughs) and explain to me what made you realize like or i could do one and then have them printed like how did you come to that realization or how did actually how did you grow to accept it i'm assuming it was more of an acceptance and the, the reason being was exclusively financial um in order to mass produce your work, you have to invest in something. Mm -hmm. If that is getting a a printing company in the area to print for you, if that is getting your own printer, if you do everything from your house, which I do now, um, and if you do everything from your own house, you have to have, the computer you have to have the software you have to have the printer you have to have the right ink right and you have to have the right materials to print onto them the ink um, is the hardest part that's it, it's like i just got ink where did it go <laughs> it, it, well an ink is so brutally expensive i know what it it was then it is now you know the supply chains screwing everything up mm-hmm. um, but I needed to make that 
investment. And eventually I did because there came a point where my time was more valuable than that initial investment. Okay. And so I did a bunch of research. I bought my own printer. I purchased an iPad specifically for my business purposes. Um, And then I started mass producing my cards, which is why I'm able to both uh, offer the quantities of cards that I do right now at the price point that I have. Okay. Which is really important because my hand painted cards, I was first of all selling them like way too cheap because I'm trying to get a foothold in the market. Okay. But um, I was still selling them at like eight to $10 a card. And that's, pretty expensive if somebody wants like 20 christmas cards yeah to send out during the holiday season um so i needed to find a way to offer my cards at a lower price point so that people could purchase in that bulk order um but then it also cuts costs down for me for like more generic cards as well did you go somewhere local first before buying a printer did you go straight into uh, heck with it i'll buy a printer i went straight into i'm gonna buy my own printer and do okay this <laughs> all right um, and a, a big part of that was um i did do some research on trying to find some people that print locally and i couldn't find what i wanted specifically so i was just like i'm just gonna make this myself <laughs> right okay and it, so uh, then what kind of research like was it extensive research or you know like a day because a lot of people some sometimes it'll be like this is the thing i'm going to spend a lot of money on how much research do i do about on it or yeah how long it, did it take it it took i mean when when i decide that i'm going to do something yeah i want to do it right um so it i mean it took a number of hours of research for sure um on like finding the right printer, finding it, like the compatibility of the cards that I wanted to print on. Yeah. Um, finding like what programs that I wanted to use to put my images through and print them all, all off. Um, and also you, did you get one with a scanner or do you have a scanner separate? Cause you're doing hand painted stuff still. Yes. Okay. So I, and that's what I always have to explain to people is like, I paint the product. Yeah. And then I take my image and I make it into other stuff. Yeah. I, their minimal editing goes into, you know, taking my original image and making it into a card or a sticker or whatever. Generally, it's just cleaning up like pencil lines and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what I do that works for me right now is I take a picture, a high quality picture, and then... I import it into the program that I use. I use Procreate. Okay. um, For all of my editing. um, Mostly because I don't need Photoshop for what I use. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of stuff going for it and I just need something like fairly simple. Um, So Procreate works really well for me. And then I, you know, take my image out of my photo and transpose it onto whatever I need to use it on. Mm -hmm. That is not ideally what I would like to do. Uh, What, what you really should do (laughs) as an artist is go to a professional scanning service. And there are several in the Madison area. Really? Yeah. Um, And take your original piece and have them scan it in and they can capture like the highest quality cleanest lines and most color accurate um okay. images that way or you have your own scanner which i don't <laughs> okay i used to and i was just finding that the the scans were not coming out um as accurately as like a really high quality photo okay so oh, so you're photographing them? Yes. Okay. I, that was that was what I was gonna ask. I've it's I'm half and half, and I've also gotten half and half answers whenever I've talked to people about scanning artwork. Um, some people think photograph no good. Other people are like it's just as high a res as a scanner would be, depending on the camera that you have in your phone, 
or uh, in your if, if you have a digital camera. And you yeah. got you got to have and it's all about like, I mean, like I said, I went to film school. So a lot of my experience. Oh, right. In yeah. film school is just filtering into my my own business and how I conduct that way. And part of it is you got to have the right light. You got to have the right setting. Yeah. You got to have. That's a good point. It, a yeah. lot, a lot of it goes into like making sure that you are taking a good photo. <laughs> right. Um, well, and even film itself can be as clear as like, what is it? 4k or whatever the heck the ridiculous, like creepy, realistic camera <laughs> stuff that yeah, you can do now. I believe, I believe they're up to 8k now. Yeah. Where it looks like when wild. you're watching it on a TV, it's like, it looks like they're just people standing in front of a box in your, in your living room. Like, yep. I, there's, there's definitely an uncapped candy Valley aspect to it. At this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you, you don't need, that's the other thing too, is like, if you're going to take a picture of your artwork, you don't need it to be 4k. Mm-hmm. You just need it to be a decent enough quality okay. to make it. And that's the other thing too, is it's all personal preference. Like if, if you want it to be super, super, super crisp, there's ways to attain that. Yeah. Um, if you want to make sure if if, like color is your highest priority, there's ways to attain that. Like there's, there's different ways to go about it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all, it's all based on research and all based on like what resources you have available to you. Okay. So I'm sure this is terribly interesting. No, it actually is. It's, it, no, it very much is. This is the type of stuff that uh, all of us as creators are just like things where it's like you go, well, I, I'm going to get to that someday. Like right now, what? It, no, learning the, especially scanning. Like I said, I've uh, that concept, it's like, it's always nice to talk to someone who like has an opinion based on what they're actually doing. Whereas, I mean, for me, sometimes even uh, just scanning line art for coloring in on the computer, I use the uh the phone now and there there are apps that will capture it and actually you know it has the script in it already to go like all right we're gonna do it you know do the line art thing where it makes it black and white and you know takes out some of the pencil work and only shows the black lines all that yeah that's fascinating no it's i I very much enjoyed that yeah definitely learn and that's the other thing too is like using technology to your advantage yeah especially with like all of the st- I mean, I graduated school in 2014. That was at this point eight years ago, mm-hmm. and like things have changed so much even since then. Oh like, yeah, I'm sure some of the things that I'm doing are outdated now. And if if you can find something that works to your advantage, such as that app that you're describing right now, that yeah. like cleans up your work, then if it works for you, use it, right. do it. You're not cheating. Right. You know, it's, it's a resource to help you. Well, and the technology advances so much that you forget even that little of time ago, like, you know how the, Facebook does that thing where it goes memories from the past yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah. I see photographs from like 2013 or 2016 that I took on my phone and it's like, that looks horrible. And I thought yeah. it was like the greatest photo in the world. And it's yeah. literally like, no, my, this, camera it's like there's no lighting uh it, you know the background is all fuzzy it, but i thought it was like wow i can just do this on my phone and now it, it's ridiculous like my phone is way better than half the stuff so yeah it's it it changes every day it's yeah anyway it, <laughs> it's important to remember that and it's important i think that artists take that into consideration yeah because that's the thing too is you it, you can very easily get stuck in your ways of like, this is how I do it, Mm -hmm. how I've always done it. And you can take away some of that headache sometimes if you just try something new. Well, and that being said, just for, just for fun, uh, you being a film school student. So, uh, do you still have the argument of film versus digital? Do you have, (laughs) there is a, there is a purpose for both. Oh Yeah. That's and, a very democratic way to say it. <laughs> yeah. At this point, it's almost all aesthetic. Yeah. Like you can there's so there's so many filmmakers now. Like you'll you'll see in the Oscars every year there's at least one film nominated that was filmed on film. 
Right. And it was, it, and generally is done that way for an aesthetic purpose. Yeah. Um, well, and they have the money to do it. And they the have time. the money to do it because <laughs> film is really expensive. Right. Especially now. Um, I am not a purist. <laughs> okay. That's what I, basically that's what I was getting at. I wasn't quite sure how to put that, no. but it, and not that it matters. You can be whatever you want to be, you know, it's yeah, exactly. It, there's, I mean, film, film is film as, as a general category, digital or whatever. Yeah. Making movies um, and taking photos for that matter. Um, they, they are both, pieces of art in their own right oh yeah and however you want to make that art is just like whether i choose to use watercolor or oil pastels or (laughs) acrylic how you make whatever you want to make is up to you and if using true film is a part of your aesthetic then do it yeah you want to go digital then do it <laughs> yeah. do you make stuff in oil pastels or water or uh, acrylic i do mess with acrylic quite a bit i okay. oil i don't touch and the re- <laughs> <laughs> um the the reason behind that is i actually i i tend to be a very impatient person oil takes a long long time to dry yeah um it's it's that way for a reason and it's really fun to mess with but i don't I, I i don't think i'd be able to like make that a part of my profession yeah i'm saying that now this could change in 10 years i don't know <laughs> uh um uh, acrylics i uh use quite a bit if i want to paint like a big landscape scene for instance like if you're thinking like bob ross type okay um landscape scenes which do you do i a lot of have those? i have done quite a few of them okay and they're fun yeah. um i i prefer uh the surprise that watercolor tends to offer me because i i can while i'm painting a watercolor piece i i never i know what like generally how i want it to end up but i never know how it's going to end up specifically okay and i really love messing with like the granulation of the paint and how the colors are going to interact and mix together and subsequently dry together and how i'm going to um make colors play with each other both like as they dry and then like after they dry Hmm. um and with acrylic it's more straightforward where i can be like i want to paint a mountain with some trees and a nice sky and i know exactly how to go about that and i know exactly how it's going to turn out okay and that's not necessarily a bad thing either because sometimes i want that direction and that clarity um but it's not what I like truly love to do. Yeah. And do you just make up the scene that you're going to do or do you actually like take from a scene that you've seen or a picture or an actual specific place? It all depends. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes I'll just like create whatever I want in my mind's eye or whatever. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll be referencing a photo. Um, it's it's all kind of whatever I feel like. Okay. Moment. Yeah. A little, a little bit of everything you're saying. Okay. It, I do find yeah. that fascinating because whenever I sit down and I'm thinking of doing a background, I'm like, I don't know where to start. So I just imagine some place that I've been and then I draw it completely wrong and it's my own thing anyway. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's, that, part of the ma- but that's part of the magic of it too is like you can be like, okay, I'm going to picture Devil's Lake. Yeah. And then you draw something that is – reminiscent of a lake with some rolling hills yeah. it's not devil's lake but right. that's okay too <laughs> it's devil's lake adjacent <laughs> yeah there you go. and uh, yeah when you started when you started uh or when you decided to start doing events and you said you so you were making uh you started making art and then did your first event i think you said was in 2018 it was 20, 2019 fall 2019 so how much stuff did you have before you 
tabled like you were still hand drawing at this time i'm assuming or hand painting at this time all all of these were still hand painted pieces <laughs> yeah so how much stuff did you have because like, i've done that, events and they're you know it feels weird when you show up and everybody else has like five tables worth of stuff and I've, i'm like here's like three things i brought <laughs> yeah and like looking back at what i initially had i just i i just think to myself like Man, I've come so far because it's not necessarily you. You have you have to have those foundational steps in order to be where you're at today. Mm -hmm. So it's not like oh, I made a such a mistake or I should have done this differently or whatever. I don't think I don't think that at all because all of that was extremely important for the progress that I have since made. Yeah. Um. I I I didn't have much, and I remember specifically at that fair. I made like maybe like two hundred dollars or something, which at the time I was like, "Yes, yeah, right, that was awesome." Two hundred dollars um, for like probably four or five hours work—that's not bad. Not not bad, and it was also it, the the other thing was too like it the weather that day was awful. It was mm. awful. Like people at people at this fair like tend to come back every year, and they still talk about the the wind gusts were like. <laughs> Oh, it was one of those. Okay. Yeah, it was like 25 to 30 miles an hour, and it was really, really cold. And I'm sure your paper I, stuff was fine. <laughs> yeah, right? I had a lot of stuff, like, weighted down. Yeah. Um, and I, I – so a little bit of a digression. I played rugby for many, many years. Okay. And um, three of my rugby teammates were there with me, and we're, like, very strong, very capable women. Mm -hmm. And – um, it wasn't even like two or three o'clock. We were all on a corner of the tent holding it down. <laughs> and one of my friends went into the middle to like hold it down by the middle and a gust came and lifted the tent up and it lifted her off the ground. By Come on. <laughs> and that was when I was like, we're done. Yeah. So I, like $200 on a really terrible day like that was like. That's a win, right? Mm -hmm. Like people still came out and buy, bought my stuff, even though it was a windy, windy, nonsense, rainy day. It yeah. was awful. Um, and I had like two or three like buckets, I guess, of like cards that I had like hand painted and packaged. Um, and like a few original pieces that were like smaller. Um, and other than that, it like, it really wasn't a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, so like we packed everything up and like at least one of my boxes of cards like blew down the street. So we had to like gather them all up. <laughs> <laughs> and at my neck, by the time my next event rolled around, which was February of 2020. So like, Lit at this point, literal weeks before the shutdown, um, I between then, between like fall and February, I had started printing my own products, mm -hmm. and I showed up at the fair with many more options. Yeah, um, and made like six hundred dollars. Nice, and I still I still have those numbers in my brain because it was it was significant for me as like a new creator to be like, this is sustainable. Yeah. Like this is a valid form of like a side form of income and I'm not wasting my time. Like people are interested in what I have to offer. And that was really rewarding for me and really encouraging for like moving forward yeah um and by this point like another the christmas season another christmas season had come and gone and i had done fairly well as far as like online sales went so when the pandemic rolled around mm -hmm. and all in-person events were canceled for the foreseeable future yeah um, i still had my online sales established by that point and and where were you selling online etsy just etsy okay 
You don't you don't cross promote or you don't cross post anywhere. No, okay. um, and that's one of my goals for this year. Actually, is to set up my own independent website. Yeah, I was going to um, ask uh, why you don't have your own website. I don't yet, and really, the reason is time. <laughs> okay, makes sense. <laughs> because I do, yeah, because I do have a day job that I do full time, um, and I do my art in the evenings and on the weekends. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll go to work and then come home and fulfill orders um, or be painting commissions or whatever I'm doing. Yeah. How, uh, how often do you uh, fulfill orders? Do you do them every day when they come in or do you have s- uh, specific days throughout the week where you're like, okay, today's a shipping and packing day or something like that? Generally, I do specific days. Okay. Uh, and it also largely depends on like my energy levels for the day too. Understandable. Yeah, I have a fairly physically demanding job, so and I live in Baraboo, so I'll drive to Madison and back every Oh, your day. job is in Madison? <laughs> yes. I know so many people that have done that over the years. I've worked at places, and they're like, oh, I come in here, I, I commute from Janesville every day, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? And, and they're it's like, a- well, there's nowhere to work. They, they're like, they don't have the job I need where I live, you know, and mm-hmm. it, it makes sense, but I'm like, God, I would hate to do that. I, I have a hard enough time, like, when I was uh, working, I, I worked... I worked a block away from a place I lived once and I still showed up late, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a choice that is made. <laughs> yeah. um, my, my husband's job is in Baraboo and we always wanted, you know, more of a small town vibe because I lived in Madison for many years. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I commute to and from Madison and I get home and, some some days I'm just so burnt out that I just like don't well, want to do especially in the winter. So, I mean, you leave work and it's already dark outside and you're driving in the dark. That's awful. The winter's brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's I brutal. Know. It's hard. Uh like I get seasonal affective disorder. Yep. It's I it's awful. <laughs> it's definitely more manageable when it's brighter outside. Yeah. Um so yeah, but generally and my online sales throughout the year are not are, are nothing like super special and that's another thing too is like i do i do a lot of shows and a lot of conventions and a lot of craft fairs and things like that that is where my side income comes in yeah. from and i know a lot of creators that they are the same way mm-hmm. uh, where like online sales are not steady at all and are not like a reliable form of income at all some people it's the opposite some people only do online well and that's why i cross post too you know that's that's what i mean is like going to having the uh, well because it's a give and take not having your site and having only a place like say etsy or like for me ebay for the most part or facebook marketplace i can send people to that i can promote something that's on that but those platforms also like when people show up there, they're like, or you might like this. And then boom, those people are away from you. That's the bad thing. The good thing is people go, I want this thing and I want to look for it on Etsy and they go and your stuff could show up. So it's like, you're at a place where people are going to actually look for stuff and you're not trying to send them there. So it's a give and take, but that's the beauty of having your website too, is you can promote that thing on your website. They go there and then they look around your website. Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's there. There's advantages to both because mm-hmm. Etsy does do a lot of the the customer driving for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say, I don't necessarily like not cross post because I do post on like my personal Facebook, and I'll post on Instagram oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, like to my followers specifically. Hey, I made this new sticker. Here it is. If you want one, just directly message me mm-hmm. and then we go from there. But I'm not cross posting on like a different website platform. Right. You know what I mean? So having having your own fans, that's another thing. Like as a creator, having an Instagram and having a Facebook at this point is almost essential. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because you have your fans, you have your followers, you have your people that are interested in what you have to offer. And if you have something to sell, 
and it's new and they want it, then you can like offer it to them first and they know about it first. Right. Um, and then you also have your website where people can just discover you. Yeah. So. And you mentioned your stickers. How are you making those stickers? So with my stickers, I do go through a vendor. And the oh, you do? Okay. Why that, yeah. And the reason why I do that is because, and my end goal would be to be able to offer the quality that I'm able to offer right now out of my own home. Right. But that's what I was wondering if you got one of those printers that like does the die cut stickers and like you actually ponied up for one of those. That's what I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't yet. And the, the reason being is because, I mean, it is a true like ponying up. Like yeah. It's, yeah. It's, no, I was looking at one like, the other day and I'm like, that would be so <laughs> neat, though. <laughs> they can be really, really expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I'm proud to be able to offer like fully waterproof and scratch proof right. stickers. And I also like offer magnets and other accessories like that. Um, and I would not be able to do that out of my own home right now. Yeah, I did. I did originally start with um, just paper stickers that I was able to offer. I tried that um, once too. <laughs> yeah. And they're, and they're fun and they have their own place and, like, and they have a I lifetime, have, I, <laughs> you know, and, they, their own <laughs> lifetime. and le- I, I do a lot of bullet journaling like that. That's a really good spot for like paper stickers and stuff like that. Oh, really? Uh, yep. Because oh. like they go in a journal and they're not getting wet. <laughs> oh, yeah. I never and you can but specifically say they're for that. I never thought of that. OK. Yeah. 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 It's like like bullet journaling, scrapbooking, like, yep. Just decorate decorating art you're going to put in frames there is a time and a place for a paper sticker. Okay. And it is not your water bottle or the back of your phone right. or, you know, the back of your car, wherever you want to put it. Like I am proud to offer stickers that can withstand a lot of wear and tear. Right. Um, and I'm also, I love seeing like where people do end up putting my stickers. Like my favorite has been a client of mine who put it on his mining helmet. Cause he's a miner. <laughs> Oh, fun. And like you, you know that that is going through a lot of scratches and wear. You know, what was the sticker? Uh, it was a Dungeons and Dragons. Sticker. Okay, I was gonna say, was this one of your dragons <laughs> one? Okay, it was. It was. A, it was on my my D twenty. Because I feel like it would be weird to have like one of one of your like hillside landscapes on that. Although no, maybe it would. You know, you're in the the mines. I guess it could go either way. You know, I, it, I don't know why I assumed first it would be one of the dragon ones. Okay. I yeah. never, I never make any assumptions. Yeah. I'm just like, you like what you like. That's You're right. Great, you You're know? absolutely right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, the only reason I am able to offer those stickers at the price that I'm able to offer them currently is because I go through someone else. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm using my resources to help me. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, but I do, like, all of the art is originally mine. I do all of the editing. All of the hard work goes in that, yeah. that goes to making the sticker is all me. And I'm just getting a finished product delivered to me. Okay. And I, so there was one thing I wanted to ask you about that you had mentioned way, way, way in the beginning. Um, you said you're currently working on a stop motion animation project. Can, first of all, can you talk about it? And second, so what's this? <laughs> I mean, I know it's it's not really about the artwork that you're making, but just me as an animator, kind of curious. What what stop that, motion thing are you working that on? Is totally, that is totally valid. Um, I, I, I can't talk about like my current project. Okay, that's fine. In a public in a public setting, I can say yeah what just like projects what, that i've been involved in or just you know say what uh, actually what do you do with the stop and i guess like what part do you play in it i is let's let's go with that instead the, the what, what's, i am so i am a lead animator okay um and i also assist in like the art direction and the overall direction of the piece okay um, and my main client is American Girl out of Middleton. Oh, fun. Okay. Yes. So it's it's very fun. I I do get to play with dolls all day long. <laughs> hey, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See? I'm a I am a full grown adult and that's what I do and yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Um 
So uh, uh, I've been animating for American Girl since 2016 um, as a freelance animator. And a lot of the stop motion animation content that they have on their YouTube is stuff that I have either been involved in or been a lead animator on. Oh, wow. Cool. So that's what I do. That's nifty. (laughs) I love that. It's very nifty. It's very (laughs) fun. Um, Again, I I can't talk about like current projects. No, that's great. I just wanted to know more about like, basically I wanted to know what your involvement in some stop motion animation was. So that's, I respect, I respect the confidentiality. That's fine. (laughs) All, all NDA fun stuff. Yeah. Um, No, I'm, I'm fully aware. I worked for the healthcare industry for many years, so I'm fully aware. Like I know not to pry. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But it is something that people do always ask me, like, are you going to do this with your own work? Um, and the answer is yes, I would love to, (laughs) right. Um, the thing about stop motion that I'm sure you're all too familiar with is that it takes a lot of time. That's why I don't do as much of it as I'd like. (laughs) Yes. It is extremely fun and extremely rewarding and very, very accurate, um, accurately depicted in that one parks and rec episode where Ben Wyatt, like starts making a stop motion animation (laughs) (laughs) and he animates like like two full seconds or something and it takes him like all day long. That's accurate. Yes. So like, yes, I would love to do some of it with my artwork once I have the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's the other thing too, is like as a freelance animator, I get paid to do this thing. Right. If I'm doing it with my own art, I'm not getting paid. to do this <laughs> thing. So it's also a matter of like, weighing what my time is worth if i should be producing a new piece of art that i can eventually turn into like my own cards Mm -hmm. and like make that investment or if i'm going to do stop motion animation just because it's fun (laughs) right the toughest thing and the most intriguing thing that i've had uh, a conversation i've had with an animator i had a uh, an artist on the show uh, named joe janofsky and one thing, and he's done animation or he wants to do more, but it's just the process involved. And he said what he's still trying to do is like there are these people that get accolades online for just doing like a three second animation, like basically making a GIF and yeah. people will share the heck out of it. And I'm like, God, that's so true. It would be so easy to do a three second. But the problem is, is my head can't stop going. There's a plot line involved in like a thing has to it not just like, hey, look, it's going like this. It, it, I, I can't it, like I need to get out of my own head and like going that it has to have a beginning, middle and an end. I just needed to do something goofy and then post that. So, but that's, yeah. that's one thing that I've been trying to incorporate is just do tiny little animations and go, that's what it is instead of, you know, trying to make it like a, a thematic premiere. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's honestly like my problem too, yeah. is I keep thinking about like, Oh, this grand thing that I would love to show when in reality I could animate a simple drawing of a ball bouncing up and down and using like the ball, doing like the ball mechanics of like yeah. the, the contracting and expanding mm-hmm. and it would get just as much attention. Anytime as it, I'm researching animation. Part. Yeah. Anytime I'm researching animation on YouTube, every video I find that goes, Oh, this one looks like it might have the problem uh, that or solve the problem for me. And it'll be five minutes of them showing how to animate a bouncing ball to show how the software works. And it's like every, it's like, God, I could just make 20 of those videos and I'd get a million views yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> that is so true. And I, I think that's just a common, a commonality that creatives have honestly is the tendency to overthink. Yeah. <laughs> because we want to create and make something really cool that we enjoy. That's really, really special. And yeah. then we get over our heads about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Oh man. Yeah. Which is why it's amazing that you were able to put out so much work and actually like start doing shows and you had all this, got your own printer and all that. Although I suppose that involved a lot of thought process and bringing it in house. Huh? A lot. A I'm lot recapping of our, our, our interview on in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Well, and that's the other thing too, is like, you know, people will be like, oh, like, how long did this take? How long have you been doing this? How, whatever, whatever. I started the process in January of 2016. Yeah. And it's May of 2022 at the time of this recording. Mm-hmm. 
and I that's that's a full almost six and a half years at this point. Yeah. And I am only just now getting to the point where I'm like having going to like a craft show every month. Yeah. And I uh, putting out like a consistent amount of content using the work that I have built up over the past six years. Mm-hmm. And it, it's one of those things where I, I often forget like how much work has gone into it. Mm, yeah. Like I, I have to remind myself you have done so much work and that's an amazing thing. Yeah. It's okay. If you like take a day off every once in a while, you know? Um, but also like reminding myself that it didn't happen overnight Oh yeah, and it took a lot of work and a lot of persistence. And that's something that's important to remember. And uh, so one more thing I wanted to ask is, uh, do you have any events that you'd like to tell people about that are coming up or any new projects that you're working on that you'd like to mention? I, um, uh, yes, sort of. <laughs> okay. I, Intrigued? I, I will say on, so my most important project that I'm currently working on is growing a human. <laughs> right. I've, I saw that. <laughs> um, yep. I, so like, or after early July, it's going to be a little while before I'm back on the scene. Other than that, you can find my work on Instagram at Shop Prints or on Facebook, as well as on my Etsy, same name, Shop Prints. Um, and you can always, always reach out to me by direct message on through either Instagram, Facebook, or Etsy, uh, in ask me about whatever art I have to offer stickers, cards, prints, whatever. Um, I will be opening commission slots soon as well. Okay. If you want something a little more personalized. So that's, uh, that's what I've got going on in the near future. And in the far future, I do a lot of holiday shows All right. in the area. So stay tuned for those. Great. I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad we got the chance to catch up and finally talk. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you.